So this panel discussion from the Future Scientist Forum is to throw light on what is the current state and how you know the next five years from now or you know at the max like 2030 how we are going to see the life sciences as a whole emerge and what kind of opportunities we have been. We welcome our special guest, our guest of honor, Mr. Sai Prasad Garu, Executive Director of Bharat Biotech. Uh, Dr. Aarti Raja, please. Uh, Dr. Sushmita Sundar from uh, Rich. Rich uh, is a Research and Innovation Circle of Hyderabad. She heads, uh, uh, you know, the uh, life sciences and health tech. Dr. Santosh Panjara, heading the as a director in ICMR into the health intelligence, and also uh, Mr. Srikant, the CEO of 108 Fund, the venture capitalist fund. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Yeah. And Dr. Krish Koluri. Uh, who's here from UK, London, and he's, uh, you know, a research principal scientist at uh, Apollo Therapeutics. Yeah. Yes, yes. Please. Oh, you know, Mr. Sai Prasad Garu, who is heading CII Telangana as the chair. So, the overall visibility of how the industry is shaping up. So, we would uh, love to hear from you, sir. And then, human resources part, and you know, the uh, from Dr. Aati Raja, and how uh, Telangana is shaping up the startup ecosystem as well as the inno innovation ecosystem with respect to this deep tech uh, research R&D. You know, from uh, Dr. Uh, Sushmita Sundar's 108 fund. So, you know, Mr. Srikanth, you know, he's been involved in few life sciences uh, and the clinical trial companies and he has seen how the market is emerging with respect to the cash flows with respect to the return on investment in this sector sorry dr krish he's uh, more into the therapeutic research he's more focusing on the digital side of the drug discovery and the emerging trends into this space and getting into the managed r d part that we have been discussing you know, he's interested in bringing more this kind of a managed r d into the hyderabad so more from you sir and uh, dr santosh a dear friend he's on the ground they're implementing you know a lot of projects from the government public private partnership and what exactly on the ground challenges with respect to the research with with respect to, to getting things to the last mile delivery we'll uh, hear from all our uh, you know distinguished panelists please sir over to you Uh, thank you, Srikanth and Usha, for inviting me, and thank you for being very persistent. I'm glad I came. Uh, when Srikanth was mentioning that uh, the program was delayed because of uh, scheduling issues, the issue was me. <laughs> it's not anybody else. So today has been a hectic day. Um, in the morning from 10 to 1, there was Secretary of Labor, Government of India, who was at Trident Hotel. So we, I had to spend some time with her. There was a big industry interaction on HR and IR policies. And in the afternoon, we also have a Indian Pharmaceutical Congress that's going on at the high techs and HICC. More than 5,000 or 10,000 uh, industry uh, professionals, regulators from around the world are participating in that. So it's our industry event, so we need to show face. Uh, the deputy CM and several political folks were there. So to give you an overview of uh, what's happening in Hyderabad and Telangana in the pharma industry and biologics and vaccines. I don't need to give you the numbers. You can, you know, you can read about it yourself and do the research on the internet. But there are reasons why Hyderabad uh, is one of the largest pharma or the vaccine clusters in the country. Uh, equivalent to Maharashtra, equivalent to uh, Gujarat, um, maybe much larger, larger than Bangalore. Uh, the main reason is the government of India since the 1950s or 60s set up several uh, national institutes in Hyderabad. Uh, I don't know why they decided to do that. Maybe it was because of the geographic center of India. Maybe it had three military bases here. Uh, it is a very secure location, whether it is DRDO or Army or Air Force or the ICMR or uh, DSIR. Um, Department of Biotechnology, Ministry of Science and Technology, everybody has their research institutes, IICT, NIN, um, CDFD, um, several other DRDO institutes here. And that spawned um, a significant intellectual uh, capital here in terms of basic sciences, uh, chemistry, analytical chemistry, biological sciences, 
so that uh, I think that was the core. And after that came entrepreneurship. You know, Dr. Reddy's founded one of the earlier companies here in Hyderabad. And ever since then, there has been series of entrepreneurship with Divi's, um, MSN Pharma or SMS Pharma or Granules, uh, Natco or Bharat Biotech that was founded in 1996. Um, so there are several companies here. So in terms of vaccines, India supplies almost 60% of the global requirements of vaccines. And we are all uh, investing very heavily to even increase that even further. Uh, we ourselves have facilities in five parts of the country. We operate in uh, Hyderabad, Bank Karnataka, in Pune, in Gujarat, in Ankleshwar. And also recently we've invested close to about 2,000 crores in Bhuneshwar. Uh, is a one of the largest vaccine manufacturing facilities for human vaccines. So we operate in human vaccines, animal vaccines, and also on food processing. We do several aspects of food processing out of Bangalore, and we do exports to US, Europe, and many other parts of the world. So specifically coming to um, India and then Telangana and Hyderabad, we've done really well, I would say, for the last 20, 30 years or so as a vaccine industry or a pharmaceutical industry. But this uh, doing well concept has brought us to be a um, multi-billion dollar industry in Hyderabad. But all of this industry is based on volumes. It's not based on value. So what we are all looking at from industry is that we need to move up that transition from volume to value. Because the volume can be easily copied by China or Africa or other parts of Asia. Uh, especially after the pandemic, many countries around the world want to establish their own uh, manufacturing facilities for pharmaceuticals or vaccines. Uh, but what companies like us are doing is that we're trying to move up the value chain. And you saw that uh, during COVID, we were the only Indian company to come up with a vaccine uh, in a short time. And many people ask, what was the magic that Bharat Biotech did that in 12 months or in 15 months you were able to come up with a vaccine? So I tell everybody that it's not the magic what we did for the 15 months during the pandemic. It's the hard work and discipline that went on for the 25 years before the pandemic. So if you don't train yourself into doing innovative work or new projects, new molecules, uh, do something different than what your neighbor is doing, you won't be able to do what we did in the pandemic. You'll be thinking, let my neighbor invent Covaxin and then I'll try to copycat Covaxin. That'll be your mindset. And that doesn't work. So the stuff of legends is based on the hard work and discipline for 25 years and what we could quickly do in 15 months. So I think that's the general understanding, um, whether it is in our pharma space or vaccines or in the IT space. If you look around and look at the big wigs of our, you know, IT industry and say that I want to do what uh, Infosys or TCS is doing, you're not going to be successful. You need to look at what Infosys and TCS is not doing and try to create a niche for yourself over there and do that. Uh, I do agree that our country's socio-economic situation for the last couple of decades was not conducive for that. When people like me were growing up, I mean, failure was not an option. So we ended up taking the easy path for everything, uh, the highly successful path. Today, um, failure is highly acceptable and parents themselves are uh, suggesting for their children to try new things and maybe fail, maybe succeed, it doesn't matter. That shows up on the number of startups. Um, so I think the country is looking at a different, um, um, I would say we are turning a different page as a nation. Um, the shackles of uh, colonialism don't exist with us anymore. We are not looking for reaffirmation from anybody outside of this country. We don't need any other, anybody in Asia or Europe or the Americas to come and tell us that what you're doing is right or wrong. I think we have our own ecosystem. It's driven by our economy, which is almost 70% domestic. We're not an exports-driven economy. So if the rest of the world, I would say, goes to some other hell in a handbasket, we can still survive. We're not like China or any of US or Europe where the dependence on exports is much larger. We are a 70% domestic circular economy that is three or four trillion right now, and this is going to become 10 or 20 or 30 trillion in the future, and this trajectory is going to continue as such, that 70% domestic economy is going to continue. So I think 
when you think about products and solutions, think about that for our own country, but it's also think about it as to what you, how that can be translatable to other parts of low-income countries or middle-income countries or even high-income countries. And there is a couple of other perspectives that I want to leave you with uh, before I end my intervention, is that if you look at every other, I mean, today we are the third or the fourth, fifth largest economy, we're going to grow to number four, number three, maybe even number two, eventually 30, 40, 50 years from now. But if you look at how every other country has grown, developed country, European country, America, China, Russia, they all grew because of colonialism, they grew because of natural resources, maybe they grew because of dictatorship or communism, they grew because of um, slavery, they grew because of profiting from foreign wars. Uh, if you, and India is the only country has not grown because of any of these aspects. India has been growing purely because of one reason. Can anybody in this room tell me what that one reason is? What, why India has been growing? HR. <laughs> human resources, right on. So we're only growing because of our, our best asset is our human resource, our best asset is our human capital, our best asset is between our ears, I would say, our brains. So I think that's the reason why India is going to be a very successful country if people like us put our minds together. So it's not because of natural resources, it's not because of oil and gas, it's not because of foreign wars, it's not because of slavery or colonialism. We don't need to do any of that. If we can just grow at the rate we've been growing for the last decade or two decades, I think we'll be a very successful company in decades to come. And there is, it's not a running race, it's a marathon. It's not about who reaches a 10 trillion or a 20 trillion or a 30 trillion mark first. It's about how we improve lives and livelihoods of people as we get there. So um, with that, I'll leave my intervention. Thank you. I was based at uh, Uni National University of Singapore. And that's when the first time I saw an intersection between science and management. And that changed my perspective. I was, I was too late in my journey to have that intersection. So I'm really happy that these students have it early on in their education system when they can get experience of being interdisciplinary. So just to uh, add on to my lack of management skills, I worked at ISB for five years to add on to my scientific knowledge and technical knowledge, the management skills. And from last two years, I'm part of RICH as the head of life sciences. So uh, RICH stands for Research and Innovation Circle of Hyderabad. And it is an enabling ecosystem similar to T-Hub. Uh, it, uh, it was funded by government of Telangana and started in 2017 along with the other innovation ecosystem players. So in Telangana, there are 10 innovation ecosystem players, and one among them is Rich. As Sir pointed out, Telangana is blessed with almost 30 plus research institutions in life sciences and agriculture space. And not just research and academic institutions, it has uh, excellence in terms of industry as well. So Genome Valley, where Sir comes from, is a hub for pharma industries. There is Medical Devices Park, which is coming up in Sultanpur. And there is also plans to build pharma villages across the state. So dearth for the need for life sciences capital is out there. So we have research institutes, we have academic institutes, we have industry. So the natural path to take any idea from the lab to market is through startups. And that has exploded in the past few years. So with the inclusion of national policies in terms of st startup ranking, startup initiatives uh, through DPIIT, and other departments have created numerous opportunities for startups. So in T-Hub and at Rich, we see startups working across areas of life sciences. It's not just pharma industry. So we see startups working in medical devices, diagnostics, digital health, so if you are, a, uh, if you are thinking, uh, I come from an IT background, I do not have experience of healthcare. D healthcare engineers, doctors need you. S there is a dearth of uh, 
staff who can understand both IT and healthcare. There is a necessity to translate the language of healthcare to IT and IT to healthcare. And then there are uh, startups which are in the pharma, biotech, and public health space. Increasingly, there is a necessity to reach to the last mile for public health, entire three, tier four cities in the rural, uh, where delivery can be at the uh, at the site itself instead of commute of people from r villages to city for access of health care. The necessity is also for the uh, care to be available in those sites. So there are a lot of startups working on this space as well. And um, many startups which have received fund, raised fund, and also generating employment. So there is a lot of social impact that happens through startups, uh, definitely in the life sciences space. So we work with all these ecosystem players. We are a, in, a collaborative entity. We bring in players who are with specific need. We assess, curate the solutions according to their requirement. So happy to interact. We are based out of T-Hub in level three. Any uh, student startups, any startups out here wanting to explore where life sciences can be, you can connect with Srikant sir and us. And as well, uh, through 6D, we will envision that you will be a capital for not just industry, but also for the startups. And more importantly, you will be also starting your own startups, be job creators, not just employers. So all the best, looking forward to interacting with many of you in the future. Thank you, Dr. Sushmita. So you understand the plethora of opportunities, you know, <coughs> coming your way and uh, I want uh, Dr. Krish to actually give more details about how and, you know, his planning and, you know, the kind of emerging, you know, global trends, which is uh, giving a new opportunity to India, please. Uh, uh, thank you, Srikant Garu. Uh, so it's really an honor to be here. Uh, thank you, Srikant Garu and Vasha Garu, to invite me. And it's an honor to be sitting beside these distinguished guests. So what I want to add is I, I don't know much about in Indian uh, 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 drug discovery scenario. I know vaccines, we are really good. But I'm not entirely sure how we are doing in terms of uh, small molecule drug discovery in terms of new drugs and also probably antibodies and also advanced therapies like cell and gene therapies. Uh, so uh, as uh, um, Sir said, Sai Prasad Sir said, um, we got a huge manpower. And uh, so the company which I work, Apollo Therapeutics, so it's, it's a completely different uh, approach where we collaborate with universities. We take up projects from the universities and then uh, translate it into clinic. We do the drug discovery process. We are completely virtual, so we rely on contract research organizations in uh, India, China. So we collaborate with some institutes in Hyderabad as well. So when I spoke with my uh, colleagues who are like head of chemistry or head of biology, what uh, they said is that uh, India is like about seven, eight years behind China. They said like China used to be like this seven, eight years ago. So slowly India is catching up. I think what Srikant Garu is doing is like amazing to do that, to bridge that gap, uh, give skills, uh, provide right curriculum to the students so that we bridge that gap so that they are ready for the industry. They, uh, and, and my dream, I think, uh, as you know, like vaccines, we produce like amazing COVID vaccines. But I think like oncology, there is like immune checkpoint inhibitors or like really a new path breaking drug. I would really dream of seeing a drug which really alters the course of disease from India. I think that would be really amazing. And I'm sure uh, these new generation students who get trained in the future scientist program would play a key role in, in that area. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Krish. So these are the new emerging job trends. So while you're at university, see, we are, we're talking about future scientists, the program, and the other day, Krish, you know, Dr. Krish has given us a very strong validation of the kind of job opportunities coming to the students' way, you know, starting from their college level. And they're ready to work and they're ready to take that kind of a mode of engagement in the managed R&D space. So I heard your question as well in terms of managed R&D. So this is not just in the domestic space, also from the global markets. People are looking 
to move these kind of opportunities to India from China or any other existing, you know, players and you know, uh, Mr. Srikanth. So, being a venture capitalist and your extensive experiment, you know, experience in uh, investments and the ROI space. How would you see this kind of an emerging trend? Because pharma drug discovery from a venture capitalist perspective is a different story. So, over to you. Okay. So, first off, thank you so much, Srikant Usha, for having me over here. Um, second goes the disclaimer that I'm probably the only guy here without a doctorate. I'm not a doctor, not even in my name, if you can read this, a doctor. But that, uh, but that said, um, you know, um, we probably do the easy part of identifying the smart ones of, you know, all of you out here and investing in you. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm on the investment committee of Bayrak, CCMB, and IIIT Hyderabad's Metech OSIS Accelerator for the last many years. And I can tell you, and also in my previous role prior to founding 108 Capital, which is a growth stage uh, venture capital fund, I uh, used to head up investments for Jubilant Bharatiya Group. Of course, the consumer-facing business is the food business for us where we used to run Domino's Duncan and all but we also had a large Jubilant Life Sciences which got demerged into Jubilant Farmova in Grevia and we also have Jubilant Biosis which is based out of Bangalore right so uh, and I can tell you that you know for very long life sciences used to be something that the VC cycle you know VCs used to skip that it used to skip the VC life cycle it used to be more of a private equity and a strategic play that used to happen it's not really changed much as yet, but you know, I, I, you know, we've done a lot of programs in you know AI in drug discovery, which kind of expedites the time to launch, the cost of launching from a couple of billions of dollars to probably more than a decade of time that it takes, kind of gets compressed and um, early shoots, but I, I I would say promising and uh, long way ahead. Uh, but that's the, I would say, path that uh, we are seeing as investors. Uh, still early days um, because the investment uh, for a fund cycle, it's about 8 plus 1 plus 1. So unless we kind of can see the commercialization happening early on and then, you know, this, you know, where you get your returns back on the investment. Uh, but that said, as I, you know, um, you know I, I see a lot of promise uh, with uh, AI and ML. Uh, the key challenge here is data. Um, you know, and in any compared to any other sector, accuracy in healthcare life sciences is most important. And we're talking about AIML, it's really about training the data. So, first, the qu availability of data, quality of data, training that data, giving you insights, and then actually, you know, you have something which you can, you know, uh, commercialize soon and not take billions of dollars and, you know, more than a decade. So, and so, th so that's really important and we are seeing that happen now. Uh, data is available, data is oil, data is gold, but the data is not really useful. So it has to first be in a form which can be useful and then you need to train the data, take those insights, apply the AI ML knowledge and then you will see, you know, more productive, you know, uh, results. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Shugan, for... See, I mean, it's a straightforward statement, yeah, if you can cut down on the discovery timelines, that's the go-to market. And then, you know, uh, pharma or life sciences is no, uh, not like, a, you know, untouchable uh, market for the venture capitalists. So this has been a case for the last two or three decades. I know, uh, you know, we have done some very good discussions around this uh, during our Badra Chalam oh. trip. Now with the AI drug discovery, you know, taking a digital drug, drug discovery mode, these timelines, right, you know, are completely cutting down. This is the new trend, emerging trend. There is not huge uh, human capital there. And this is where we wish to train. We wish to create more workforce in this space. And this comes only when you guys come and participate. So there are people who are ready to invest on you. There are people who are enabling the startup ecosystem. There are people who are ready to scale and, you know, take your products to the market through the CII and also the big players are ready. Today morning I attended the CII session. It's all about corporates working with startups in the problem solving space and all the big corporates today, they have a very clear mindset on, yes, we are ready to work with the startups. We are ready to reverse pitch our ideas, our problems to the startup community who can potentially work with us. And maybe that's the space where uh, we see, you know, the venture capitalists coming, you know, getting into picture and more a plethora of drug discovery happens and go to market uh, happens from India uh, primarily and
Dr. Santosh, no, on the ground, being on the research and all, right, from the laboratory to the last mile delivery, I want you to add the traditional to the emerging uh, laboratory practices to yeah. the go-to-market. Yeah, please. So it's end of the day. I thought I'll just stand and talk. It's an hectic day for me also. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Srikant. Uh, he's my friend. Uh, just a minute, I'll talk about him. Uh, we are meeting after 26 years. Uh, we were school friends. And I would like to thank this platform, especially to Usha and Srikant, because we have come together after 26 years. One of my friends is sitting there, Harish. We are well school friends. Uh, coming to the session, uh, I would like to make a disclaimer, because I come from a, a ministry. Uh, whatever I speak here is on the individual capacity. It's not related to my institute or the ministry. Number three, I think there was a couple of questions. One person has asked who is from the commerce background, so how I will be placed in the research. So I would like to answer you. Have, but there was a partial dissatisfaction among the students, so how it will be taken forward. So whenever you have any programs, whenever the government wants to do some sort of programs, it has to be evaluated. The particular wording what we use is cost-effective analysis. So there, whatever the programs you are going to do, what is the cost involvement, what is the benefit ratio. So everything, the commerce people, the accounting people will have a major role here. That is one important area they can concentrate. Apart from that, we have some online platforms. We can, they do some sort of online courses too, so that they can strengthen the background. The second question, if I remember correctly, I think the person sitting here, he was just asking what is the difference when compared to the India and the, uh, the other countries, if I remember correctly. You can, you can correct me if I made any sentence wrong. But I think uh, Sir has clearly answered where we stand. I mean, the, the questions what you have answered, like where the India is working, the HR team is definitely coming forward to take it forward. In case of vaccines or the pharma industry, we are far ahead globally. If you think of crores of money is involved here, more than around 10,000 crores of amount is involved in the pharma industry. This is the statistics of earlier statistics, not the latest statistics. This platform, the drug discovery, considering the mainly the young generation, I would like to specifically talk to the related to the young generation. This six diversity, it's like creating, I mean, bringing the people, the academics, the industry, I'm training the young generation so that they can form the different careers considering the research background in the different work streams. In this research, I think one of the questions during the tea time, one of the person has asked, so you people, many people are talking about the research, the drug discovery, but we don't know exactly where to stand, where to start our career. So that was a valid question. Yes, boss? Yes, thank you. So I, I want to like to take that question here also. See, everyone, because at the career level, they always think that I mean, how to start our career. So where to start? We talk of on the different platforms. But the people have to understand that one or two training sessions will be given. And 6D versus is the right platform to understand what you want to do. So all the young generation people, so here we have different modules. You can go to the different modules. Once you start enrolling through the modules, you will understand where we stand globally not at the country level, globally. So then you will understand that how the competitive world is, where we stand, you can analyze yourself, your strength, because some people are good at communication. So they can get involved into the communication and health engagement. Some people are good at writing. We have a medical writing. Some people are very keen and curious and they want to understand why this is happening, what is this happening. Those people can enter into post-marketing surveillance. So we have different work streams. So you have to identify your individual talent, enroll to the different programs so that it will strengthen your background so that you can execute properly so that uh, individual growth will lead to the development of the country. Here we have different areas. I mean, I think it's 60, but I would specifically talk about the four days where we ICMR is mainly focusing. One is on the discovery, where the Bharat Biotech in co collaboration with the ICMR has done the co-vaccin. Like that, we have different areas, development research. We have delivery research. So this is what was implementation research. We have different programs, how it's being implemented. Descriptive research. So all these are different areas where you can concentrate. Always try to visit some of the government sites, like ICMR, CDSCO, Central Drug Standard Control Organization, 
IPC, Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission, CDRI, NIPER. So whenever you start browsing these websites, we always try to browse small shots, screens, or latest the Kalki movie, what is the box office collections. We try to watch related to the World Cup, related to the saucer, but we don't show much interest about own career. That is the biggest lacking in every of our students. So once start you search the Googling it and start searching about yourself, then you will understand where you stand, which are the different areas, where you need to concentrate. Accordingly, you can plan. And those who are interested in the research, this platform will definitely will turn your future. Thank you for giving this opportunity. Uh, thank you, Dr. Santosh. And see, <coughs> so Power Pact, you know, in fact, I, I want to actually get into your labs and, uh, you know, uh, taking the biotech path from the biomedical and the healthcare intelligence. Uh, so, it's very, very informative. And uh, see, for your question, right? So, I think I'm, I'm not trying to evangelize or trying to sell 6D varsity here. Yeah. The mission is around that, the intention is around that, all the efforts are around, you know, most of the people, they don't know where to start. Right? And there is so much happening as, uh, you know, everyone is mentioning, right? It's just that you need one entry point. Once you're in, then everything, you know, is different. Maybe uh, today after this event or during the event itself, you would have uh, crossed your paths with so many people, you know, who are actually living in that space and you might have got some good inputs. So thank you. Thank you, Santosh. And, uh Dr. Arti Raja. So now we have heard the current state of India, Telangana, Hyderabad, what's happening. And with respect to our collaboration, how would you see going forward, you know, this kind of a human capital creation taking, you know, the main stage uh, from 6D and Tiny Earth collaboration? Um, so it's wonderful to hear about all the things that are happening in India. For myself as an educator, uh, what I would like to say is for us as faculty members, and I think I can speak about not just myself, but, but about faculty members across the globe and India included. Speaking of human capital being the biggest strength of India, our role then becomes as faculty members to train that human capital. And this is where programs like Tiny Earth, 60 Varsity, involvement of faculty comes in to teach the next generation, how to think critically, showcase to them what all the opportunities might exist out there, but we'd have to give them that direction. As they pointed out, a lot of times students, I believe, don't know where to go to look for those opportunities. So sometimes it has to start at the university, at the college, at the school. If you're showcased those opportunities, then maybe that interest will get peaked and then they will go looking for it, hunting for it. And then they'll realize that all these platforms exist for that field to progress. So as an educator, I think showcasing to students what's available out there, if you pick this particular field, that's my job. That's my job to pique your interest in that field. As an educator, that's where I stand. Uh, and of course, the collaboration. Um, no one likes to work in silos anymore, as I keep saying. And even in the field of science, I'm good at one particular aspect of research, um, but there's more to it. I'm just understanding one particular protein often, but there's much more to it than just that protein. Then comes the system that it's being studied in, then comes perhaps a drug that has to be designed, then comes marketing the drug, then comes the physician picking up the drug, utilizing it, then comes the patient who has to actually use the drug. So it's all collaborative. You have to collaborate with other fields. You also have to collaborate with people from across the globe because no disease, if, at least in the infectious disease space, Nothing really can be said as just a disease that exists only in this country anymore. It's increasingly becoming a global issue. So that collaboration is also useful, um, and it also opens eyes for students. I think it's wonderful for my students sitting in Florida to collaborate with, or even just talk to a student from India, share how they do research, share how they learn these different concepts. So that's part of the collaboration as well. 
And we hope that this platform will offer that for students here. And I really look forward to working with uh, all avenues uh, to get that to happen. Thank you. So thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Arthi. So I think the, now we get a clear picture. I'm trying to be more of a student here and a facilitator from the student side. So somebody who is trying to learn drug discovery because I was more into a biomedical space than into health informatics to more of an enterprise architecture journey. Now and going forward as an enabler of this ecosystem and also a co-learner with them, I definitely see a lot of opportunities that are coming for somebody who wants to take, you know, somebody in a mid-career like me in 40s to somebody who is like 10, 14, 15, you know, in their high school. 6D and, you know, the collaborated ecosystem is going to definitely give us this kind of an opportunity to come, begin somewhere through the programs by interacting with people and then, you know, take it forward with the help of all the ecosystem players, you know, all the the mighty uh, vaccine creators like Bharat Biotech to, you know, the ecosystem enablers like T-Hub, Rich, to the curriculum creators at scale. Serving 16,000 plus students every year is not a joke. Tiny Earth does it, you know, with ease, basically. And now we have an acceptance, conditional acceptance from the investors community that, yes, if you really have that kind of a competency or a capability, yes, the capital is not a problem. And then, you know, uh, I think the stage is very clear. It's all upon us how we take this kind of an opportunity forward. The next five to seven years, 2030, this is the wonderful opportunity. I think that we are all, uh, you know, waiting for in the life sciences space. IT, I think we hit it really, you know, it's out of the, like Dhoni's uh, uh, hit, you know, it's out of the stadium. And today, information technology, digital transformation, and that level of, you know, the SaaS and uh, kind of startups and all, today India is on fire. I think in the next five, ten years, we're going to see this kind of a huge change coming in. We have at least, you know, 100 more Bharat Biotechs uh, or scale of companies coming in this part of the world with this kind of a collaboration. And I thank every, every panel member here for taking your, you know, precious time and, uh, you know, sharing the knowledge, insights, and the opportunities. As I, you know, was mentioning earlier also, this is the right time. Timing matters for anything. So we, we would have seen this in movies, Shanakshanam or whatever, you know, few movies, you know, in Telugu or English, right? When they were released upfront, right, you know, before, ahead of the time, and when we watch them, you know, after 10 years or 15 years, we feel they're relevant to the time. They're all ahead of time. I think your journey is, way ahead of time sir you know you have started like you know a different journey all together with a cult kind of uh, you know you are the rgvs of uh, you know biotech in india i should say and today there are you know a cult of rgv followers you know i'm talking more in the student language that can come forward and we can see a lot of uh, puri jagannaths and a lot of uh, you know trivikrams coming in this clan with your kind of uh, inspiration in the drug discovery space if if we compare a movie to drug discovery. I think this is the kind of a cult clan that we can create or cultivate or groom or nurture in the next five years and we are ready to do it. All we need is your participation and your commitment and passion. That's it. And thank you so much everyone.